Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at installing KDE on Linux Mint 19 beta. Um, of course, a lot of people like the KDE desktop environment. There's also a lot of people that don't. Um, I personally like it. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, and uh, I really, in fact, one of the my main media PC, the a hard drive actually has Linux Mint KDE on it, Linux Mint 18.3 KDE, and uh, I love it. It's really good. But of course, with 19, they dropped the KDE desktop option, and I've heard a lot of people say, you know, you could switch to Kubuntu, or you could switch to Neon, or maybe Manjaro KDE. All would be great choices, but if you really love Linux Mint as I do, and Linux Mint just does the work for you, uh, like it does for me, uh, why not just add KDE to your Linux Mint computer? Um, of course, I did this with Budgie a little while back, so you can check out that video. So if you want to run the Budgie desktop environment, and I had zero problems with my Budgie, uh, Linux Mint Budgie computer. Um, so I don't have any real evidence that installing an extra desktop is going to cause any problems. There might be a few things here and there. Um, and as I install this, what I found in my initial test is there were some things we needed to fix and, uh, and correct. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the desktop and have a look at it. So let me go ahead, I'm going to move me up there in the comment section, and then we'll go ahead and jump over to our desktop. Now if you are uh, a basic installer, if you install your operating systems like me, what I generally do um, on some of my computers is I set it to auto login. You are going to want to turn that off if you are running multiple desktop environments because you choose your desktop environment on your uh, on your login screen. So if you do not know how to do that, you need to ha hop on over to the system settings and then go on down to your login window. You will need to enter your password. And when you get to your login window here, um, click on over here to users. This is allow manual login. And I, I forget exactly what this is. I think this is typing the name. Um, or you can also hide the list of the usernames. What this is going to do, this is an extra measure of security and that Linux Mint by default will show you a list of all of the active users. Uh, so you can go ahead and click on that and uh, that will hide that if you want to be able to, to enter those in. Um, I don't care. I, I don't have any issues with those. Uh, you can turn on or turn off guest editions, but the setting we are concerned with is auto login. So of course there's a place here where if you auto, uh, whatever username you put here is going to auto log into that user. So all you need to do is simply clear that. So now once that is cleared and you reboot your system, then what we're going to find is it's going to uh, reboot into the login window instead of the uh, the operating system. Okay, so here it is bringing us to our login screen instead of the uh, instead of the desktop. So on Mint, and each one of your login screens are going to be different. This is similar uh, Mint, Ubuntu, things like that. Um, in most of your desktop environments, either right here by your username or it will be up in the upper corner. Uh, is where you will choose your uh, your desktop environment. So if I pull this down, you'll see we only have Cinnamon on here. Our Cinnamon default, of course, if you're if you have all of your graphics drivers and everything running, the default is what the basic default one. Uh, it will fall back to software rendering if you don't. Since we have VirtualBox, I'm just going to go ahead and select the software rendering to boot into this. All right, and we're just going to go ahead and log into the system. And now we are logged into our system here. So what we're going to do is uh, this is really two simple commands to, to do this. So uh, and this is there's a few ways to do this. This is the easiest way. Um, and what this is actually going to allow us to do is uh, since since the um, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, we can backport uh, the Kubuntu PPA backports and install the Kubuntu desktop, which is KDE. So there are other ways to do this. We're just going to kind of do it like this. So I'm just going to copy this from my, um, uh, and I'm just going to run this command in the terminal. So sudo add apt repository PPA Kubuntu PPA backports. Have to enter my password. 
then it's going to have us hit enter to confirm that we are going to add this PPA. That is done. Actually, uh, I missed a step. We also need to update the um, need to run the up update and we need to do a dist update. Let's just go ahead and do this one first. We need to run the update in order to do that. Okay, so now, and I forgot these, so um, we're going to add to this sudo apt update. Let me just go ahead and put the dollar sign in front of it so you know what I'm talking about there. And you also need to do a sudo apt. I think it's dist upgrade. That one might not be right, but I think that's it. Okay, that's going to install some extra information there. This is pulling in um, your Kubuntu desktop items. And then when that is done with its thing, then we are going to do this. So this will take just a moment. Now, there are going to be a couple of steps that we're going to want to do after this. Uh, what I found is doing this method, it does not actually bring all of your basic KDE applications with you. Um, which to me, that was great because it meant that uh, I didn't have a lot of extra bloated things. Linux Mint Cinnamon tools are awesome. They are all still there. What I did find though is that some of the system tools where it was expecting a KDE, KDE version don't show up. So things like your terminal end up, um, uh, end up not, being, uh, not being in the menu lists. So uh, when we get this running, we're going to boot this back up into KDE. I also will often need to run the resolution correction on VirtualBox. You should not need to do that if you're installing this on real hardware or not. Uh, but certainly on a virtual box, um, you will need to do that. Uh, so we'll run through that command. So it's not just as easy as this. That technically gets KDE on there, but there's a few extra steps you're going to want to do. All right. Now we're going to run our last one. So we're going to install the Kubuntu desktop. Okay, so that went ahead and completed. So now what our step is going to be is to reboot the system. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Remember to, oh, not new, save. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and reboot the system. Uh, we're just going to do a full reboot. Logout should be just fine, but I'm going to go ahead and reboot it for caution. Okay, so we are just about to boot up here. We're kind of in the final stages of booting. So it's going to take us to our login screen. Only now on our login screen, we should have the extra option to boot into Plasma as well. So there is our Cinnamon. Now we have our Plasma showed up. So go ahead and enter our password. And you'll, we should see our Plasma boot uh, splash screen here as it boots into Plasma. Now, for all of the a bajillion settings in KDE, there is no place in the terminal, or excuse me, in the GUI to change the resolution. So you'll see here that the resolution uh, is not uh, set right. But we have a little challenge, and that is that this system, it doesn't find some of the utilities. So it may not find the terminal. Um, at all, <laughs> which is one of those kind of like interesting things. What we're going to do though is uh, before we do anything else, um, let's go into about system. Uh, we can see that we are running uh, 5.12.5 version of Plasma Qt 5.9.5. Uh, we can see our kernel version. We're Linux Mint 19. Okay, so now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a access to a terminal. So uh, what I'm going to do is right click on the menu and I want to say it's edit applications. So let's go down under our utilities and we're going to create a new item and we're going to do terminal. And I'm going to do terminal. 
and the command I think it is gnome terminal uh, I cannot remember exactly so what I'm actually going to do just for the purpose of this video is show you how to find that uh, what I need to do is let's just go into our main root of the computer um, and inside of here I think it's a user share and applications so user share applications that's where we're going my apologies and what we want to do is we want to find a terminal so uh, properties on this guy so this is the command gnome terminal so I was right about the command so if you want to figure out what's the command to tomboy notes right click property tomboy slash search so that's the command that you want to drop inside your command line there um, you can give it an icon so there should be a terminal icon here so we'll go ahead and do that save that and now under utilities now I should have access to a terminal not sure why the terminal is missing but uh, now we can actually access our terminal now the reason we need to access our terminal is like I said KDE as much as I absolutely love it there's always quirks and things and the big quirk on KDE there's nowhere in the GUI to change the screen resolution it's insane okay totally insane because there is a setting for everything else in the universe but your resolution <laughs> so we're gonna do X Rand R dash S for set and type in our resolution, which this monitor is 1920 by 1080. Booyah. Now we are full screen and working. <laughs> okay. So there's how we get our, uh, our terminal set up. Um, now, of course, you'll see that we have our Mint updater down here. So we are fully running Linux Mint. We have all of the fun jazz now of KDE on Linux Mint. But one of the cool things is it did not actually give us all the bloat. Uh, it didn't copy over KDE and then bring every KDE application with it. I'm stuck now with just the ones that were in basic Linux Mint. For some reason, like I said, it doesn't bring that terminal. And if you find there's another application it's not bringing, you can probably add it. The terminal's the only one I found it doesn't bring with it, and I don't know why. Um, but you'll see everything else uh, does appear to be intact. Here's our settings, um, and actually we still have access to our main, um, uh, we have access still to our main, um, uh, main Mint utilities in addition to the KDE ones. So here, of course, one of the things I really like about KDE is the ability to do themes. Um, so if you go over here, we're going to go ahead and do that. Of course, if you know me, you know I'm, I'm privy to my oxygen theme. I really like the skeuomorphism of the oxygen theme. Uh, but of course, you can download new themes from online. It's loading data now. All right, so that should give us, that should give us some themes. Okay, I'm going to close that. So now we have... A few different themes we can play with. We might actually need to reset to see some of these apply, but I uh, can't remember. Okay, there's that one's that one. Let me see what's air. I'm seeing seeing if I can find the system I have on my uh, on my one one computer. It's a really nice transparency type system. Uh, can't seem to find it. Oh well, that's okay. Uh, but anyway, you can go ahead and uh, grab any of those themes, your colors, icons, um, application styles. This is the thing that people get lost in KDE, but at the same time, it really is uh, really is a, a good system. Um, 
if you really like to customize your computer, that's what I like about it. Uh, we have the widgets. It's kind of back behind my picture here, uh, but this is where you can add your widgets, and here's your uh, your widget menu. One of the things that I have uh, have noted, however, is that if you click Enter Alternatives, um, we have the application launcher here. You also have the application menu. The application dashboard seems to have vanished in this. Uh, can anybody that's using more recent version of this, is that something that they've gotten rid of or is that something that just did not port into this build? I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, but everything else, though, does seem to be... Uh, does seem to be pretty well intact. I really like this theme. This is a beautiful looking theme. Look at that. Very nice. And of course, the uh, one of the only things that I don't actually like on um, on KDE is I don't like Dolphin. I know a lot of people do. I don't like Dolphin. I find it slow and buggy. It just doesn't feel good. The cool thing about this one, Nemo, baby. <laughs> I love the Nemo file manager, my favorite file manager. Um, it just does everything I need it to do, but it has the speed. Dolphin does more, but the problem with Dolphin is it's, it seems for me slow. Um, and for a person that needs to move and navigate files back and forth very readily, um, it's, uh, I don't like, uh, I, I just don't like um, Dolphin for that reason. Um, if you are new to KDE, of course, widgets, this allows you to add a variety of different widgets and things onto your desktop. So you can go ahead and, and do things like adding, adding calendars, clocks. Uh, I use the clipboard tool frequently. There's a CPU load monitor, device mounter, a folder view. All right, so now with this, you can go ahead and just drag these guys around. So you can set up a desktop the way you like your desktop to be set up. Um, clicking on things, you can, uh, in this case, I can show the second hand. Um, now also, there are a lot of different applications inside of, uh, inside of KDE that will have the ability to have uh, what you might call alternatives. So if you click on the alternative option, um, we can change this to a digital clock instead of an analog clock. So if you like digital or analog, whatever way you like, you can do that. And just going to drag this guy over here. So I have a clock. I have a CPU load. And then the calendar over here. Um, we can configure the calendar. And the reason it's small like this is because it's the size is small. So we drag this around a little bit, grab this guy, increase the size, and we can get a full scale calendar like this. Drag it where we want it. And then now if you have all your widgets where you want them to be, uh, either the bar that's behind my picture or there's another one down here on the taskbar, you can right click this and you can lock widgets and that's going to lock anything from accidentally moving anything around. Uh, so that's one of the things I like about KDE is you have a lot more widgets. Um, they seem to integrate and work a little bit better. Um, you can put launchers on things. You have the same versatility with your taskbar, whether you want to run a dock, you can put your taskbar top, bottom, left, right. You can run launchers, just so many things. And by the way, all of these items, you can also drag and drop them right onto, uh, right onto your taskbar. So if I wanted to keep the CPU load monitor, I could actually drag it down to the taskbar. Of course, you can see that takes up a lot of room on my taskbar. Uh, but maybe that's something that seems cool to you. You know, you have that option. Uh, and that's kind of what's what's cool about uh, KDE. So you have all of those various options. Uh, so there is how to install KDE on um, uh, on Linux Mint 19. It seems to work pretty well. You need to remember that terminal command if you're running a virtual box. If you're not in a virtual box, that should not be a problem for you. Um, and do fix that terminal command. I'm not sure why that terminal command doesn't come over, but um, easy fix. Uh, so that's my thought. Uh, what's your thought on uh, on running this? 
I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.